When I posted my video challenging creationists to put up or shut up regarding the evidence that they like to lie about having, someone else commented that they hoped Dr. Michael Brown would watch that because Dr. Brown had made the common creationist mistake of not knowing what evolution is, not knowing what a fact is, not knowing what a scientific theory is, and thinking that science deals in positive proof, when really that's against the rules. Science has a prohibition against proving anything in the positive sense. The most that they're allowed to do is disprove something. And scientists are not allowed to publish claims of any theory or hypothesis being proven, no matter how obvious it is. Because one, in science, proof is only possible in mathematics. And two, it's to keep science honest and objective, which you can't be if you go around lying about having the absolute truth like believers do. Otherwise, it's just a matter of what is or isn't supported by evidence. And anything that is not supported by evidence isn't worthy of further consideration. Because without that minimum criteria, then it has no more credibility than if it had already been disproved. So if it's not supported by evidence, then it's effectively wrong anyway. But, you know, Dr. Brown is a young earth creationist radio host or podcaster or some such thing, so we wouldn't expect him to know anything about science. He seems to have a legitimate PhD, but it's in Near Eastern languages and literature, so he can read his favorite fables in the language in which they still rhyme. But again, we wouldn't expect him to know anything about science, certainly not about evolution. Still, what he said was silly on its face and needed to be addressed. In this case, as in most, well, all of my discussions with creationists, they don't know what the words they're using even mean. They redefine everything wrongly, always building straw men. But I knew that his comment could be easily corrected in a brief discussion and that we could clear that up right away, so I offered to help him. His reply, however, is symptomatic of a bigger problem. If I'm wrong about something, and that's happened several times, sometimes even publicly, much to my embarrassment. If you tell me that you have sufficient evidence to change my mind, then I'm all ears, especially when it's not just a difference of philosophy or opinion, but when it's a matter of demonstrable fact, where there is a clear right and wrong, and you can show that whatever I said is factually false and thus must be corrected. And people have changed my mind about a number of things this way because I'm a reasonable person. Reason works on me because the truth matters to me more than anything I might rather believe. The truth matters so much that I don't want to be fooled into believing anything that is not evidently true. I don't want to be misled by faulty evidence or by my own misunderstanding. But believers do. They have a completely opposite take on that. Their belief matters more to them than whatever the truth is. And we're already using a different lexicon when it comes to the word belief. If I say that I believe something, it means that this is what I think is most likely true or closest to the truth, but that I don't know that because I can't demonstrate that knowledge. But what a self-professed believer means by that is often an act of will, trying to convince themselves and others to make believe what is not evidently true nor even logically possible. When I talk to creationists, I often offer to show them all the evidence they'll ever need to see to prove evolution to their satisfaction. Not mathematic proof, of course, but in the sense of an overwhelming preponderance of compelling evidence beyond reasonable doubt to their satisfaction and admission. I will at least show them enough definitive evidence that they'll know and fully understand how whatever they said is demonstrably false so that they can correct their embarrassing error and be better for it going forward but they almost always refuse, like Dr. Brown did, because they don't want to know what the truth is. They'd rather make believe something else instead, which makes me think that on some level, they must already know that if what they believe cannot withstand scrutiny, then it is not really true and that they are, in fact, just pretending. And this doesn't apply to all creationists, of course, but it definitely does apply to every professional apologist and to all of the wanna believers who artfully dodge every attempt at correction. Now, if it happens that some cocksure and confidently deluded believer boldly declares that he can prove God or creation or whatever, again, I'm all ears. Show me what you got. I know by now from extensive experience what to expect. And it's amazing to have such low expectations and still be consistently disappointed. But at least I give them that chance. The believers won't do that for me because they don't want to hear any inconvenient truth. There's plenty of religious mythology condemning people just for learning forbidden knowledge. That's the mindset that dogmatic believers are coming from. If I believe something that you can show to be wrong, then please correct me. If I am actually sincere in that belief, then it had better be justified 
And if it's not even defensible, then my sincerity demands that I find out whether it is or not. Because I would rather be proven wrong than to remain wrong. I don't want to keep unwittingly embarrassing myself with foolish claims from a false sense of understanding. But believers usually prefer to preserve belief even when they know it's wrong. Religion considers it a virtue if you can keep making a fool of yourself that way, even if you have to be dishonest about it. So Dr. Brown refused because he doesn't want to know the forbidden knowledge. He doesn't want to know what the truth of the matter is. Instead, he tried to dredge up some other unnamed excuse maker to try and defend his faith in falsehood so that he could safely look away with his fingers in his ears. He said he didn't know enough about evolution to debate me himself. But I wasn't asking to debate him. I was asking for the opportunity to explain something to him that he is determined not to understand. You don't have to know much about something to be wrong about it. And anytime someone who does know that subject much better than you do offers to help you, then you would be wise to at least hear the reasoning. But faith is not even on speaking terms with wisdom. Believers think that wisdom is foolish and that only the fools are wise. So I told Dr. Brown that I would debate his anonymous alleged champion after he and I had our discussion first. But he thought that was rude. How dare I point out when somebody publicly says something that is demonstrably factually false? How dare I want to help someone improve their understanding? Which is absolutely what would inevitably have happened, and he knows it. That's why he refused. He doesn't want to understand. He doesn't want to know the truth. He wants to believe in a lie. If someone has formal education in a field that you don't know the first thing about, and they offer to help you understand it better, that is not them being condescending. It can be, but it's not necessarily. If, however, you then pretend as if you know more than all the experts and that you could help them find the truth when you obviously don't know it yourself, that's you being condescending to them. Thus, Dr. Brown does not have a sincerely held belief. It's not sincere because he already knows that it can't stand up to scrutiny the way I know that my position can. My position would be of no value to me at all if it couldn't. But his belief is just as precious to him whether it's true or not. For him, the truth is irrelevant. He's still going to believe what he wants to believe regardless whether it's true or not. Facts be damned. While Dr. Brown admitted that he didn't know anything about evolution, he still wrote an article accusing Darwin of racism. Never mind that Darwin spoke out against racism, against slavery, and always on behalf of indigenous people. Let's just ignore the fact that Darwin also called out all the other anthropologists of his day for their racism, and that he was the first man in history to say that there is only one human race, denying racism entirely, even in principle. And let's just instead listen to false accusations from the willfully ignorant. In the dust-up of all of this emerged Daniel King, another evangelical know-nothing wanna pretender. He brought up another common creationist fallacy, that of false equivalence as if we both have faith, as if we both have the same evidence, but we somehow both have our own mutually exclusive truth, which is a nonsense statement if I've ever heard one, and I've heard a lot of them. In fact, I've heard that one many times since I was a kid. A king attempted to answer my challenge to produce evidence of creation by telling us to buy his book, wherein he claims to have not just evidence, but proof of God. But without even browsing his book, I could already guess that he never saw the video challenge he was trying to answer. So I bet him that the so-called truth in his book was really just circular assumptions, along with arguments from ignorance and incredulity and other fallacies, without any actual factual evidence such as I asked for. In other words, it's not proof at all. I pointed out that if he actually had proof of creation, there would be no atheists anymore. Yet the majority of scientists remain unbelievers. So his claim of proof is a lie, just like his truth. And the last I heard of him was his admission of the question-begging fallacy. Once again, he believes what he believes because he believes it, and not because of reason, certainly not for a good reason. It's just a circular assumption that he's afraid to question, even after I called him out on it. If Daniel King sincerely believed his own nonsense, then at the very least, he would have had the honesty to admit that he didn't really have the evidence he claimed to have when he still couldn't produce any. So his is not a sincerely held belief either. He must know, on some level, that he too is full of shit. I don't see how either of these men can go on pretending otherwise, but that's what faith is all about. 
pretending. 